Hey everybody, Chuck Barone here. Monday, October the 10th, 2022. Man, this month's going by quick. Uh, a lot of important stuff going on in these crazy markets. Every day, man, the world turns, the stomach turns with it. Um, it's just a crazy, crazy times in finance, guys. Crazy. Anyway, as always, we just want to start by saying thank you. We really appreciate your support for the show and the videos. Um, you guys, you guys rock. You really do. You guys are awesome. Um, in the markets today, guys, well, not a very good day. Stocks down across the board. I think uh, the stock market coming to grips finally with reality. Not, you know, it kind of seems like every time there's a chance, even the slightest, most remote chance, the fit, that the evidence could show a reason for the pe the Federal Reserve to pivot and you know, stop these aggressive rate hikes, the market rallies big. And as soon as that kind of gets washed away, the market tanks. And there was just not a lot of good news for the market today. Now, this week's going to be an interesting one because even with the hawkish Fed, this is going to be a big week for earnings, especially on Friday. We're going to get a lot of bank earnings. Um, these earnings are going to be as influential in uh, what the Fed does as any many stock market thing will. So, um, you know, the markets are what they are right now, guys. It's, I hope everybody's in a defensive position because the direction sure looks down. The charts sure look down. I mean, I think the market's looking for a reason to rally. There's sure a ton of cash on the sidelines, but we just, in this environment, there is no reason. Uh, the bond market today, basically a flat day with the market being closed all day. Uh, nothing happening in bonds. Uh, the futures look like they're going to kind of hold steady, but nothing really happening in the bond market. It's Columbus Day. So for Italians like me, it's kind of a big holiday. I didn't even know the world celebrated it anymore. Um, but apparently the bond market does, so we'll see where the bond market opens tomorrow um, following the stock market today. Uh, the dollar today up again. Big day for the dollar, up of over 113 on the index. Just the world champ right now as far as currencies go. Um, you know, no other currency out there is really working uh, very well against the dollar. It's putting a lot of pressure on world, the world economy. A lot of pressure on the Fed now, too, because all of our friends are out there screaming bloody murder about how high the dollar is, putting big pressure on their own currencies, and uh, the beat goes on with the dollar. Strong dollar today, obviously not a great day for metals, as we've explained a lot of times. When the dollar is strong, metals tend to be weak. When the dollar's weak, metals tend to be strong. Um, with the dollar going up and being in a, just a super powerful position, metals down today, gold 16.69 per ounce, uh, down $26. Silver sitting at $19.68 per ounce, down 54 cents, breaking that support at 20 bucks. I was hoping it wouldn't do that, but this dollar is irresistible against metals, guys. So keep, you know, if you're a metals investor, or want to be, keep an eye on that dollar index. It's going to be a pretty good indicator of where metals are heading. Uh, Bitcoin today down again, small, 19,242 last I saw, just kind of lagging there. It's been in a trough for a while now. I think it's kind of looking for a reason to break out either up or down. It doesn't really finding it. Um, We'll see with Bitcoin. Right now, it looks a little bit shaky. I would like to see it above 20,000 and building some support. Um, I was listening to Peter Schiff's podcast today. He says that rather than building a support number, Bitcoin seems to be building a new resistance number at 20,000. Now, he's a super gold, bu super gold bug, bull, strong gold person. So I'm sure he's a, just a, maybe a scooch biased. But anyway, Bitcoin looking for a place to go. Um, this week, we got a huge week coming up for data, guys. I mean, a lot of stuff coming up. Um, like I do every Monday, I'll give you an idea of what we're dealing with this week. Tomorrow, not a lot of data tomorrow. Uh, we'll be dealing with the short selling report, though, which is always an interesting, an interesting report because it gives us an idea of how much short interest there is on the market. In other words, how much are traders betting against the stock market and against particular stocks. Obviously, massive short interest. And from what I've been reading, it's going to be a pretty stunningly high number. 
big short interest, these guys have already pre-sold these stocks. So a lot of the reasons you're seeing stocks going down is because uh, of these short sellers pre-selling borrowed stock. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what that number looks like on Tuesday, tomorrow. On Wednesday, we get the Mortgage Bankers Index, which I'm sure will have more bad news for real estate in the mortgage industry. We'll get the PPI number, the Producer Price Index, which is the rate of inflation for the cost of producing these goods and services. And we're going to get a lot of earnings starting on Wednesday with Pepsi and a couple other really big companies. On Thursday, that's the big day here, we're going to get the CPI number. Um, they're expecting 8.1% down from 8.3% last month. They're expecting the core number to be 6.6% .6 up from 6.3% last month. So that core number, if that, depending on how these numbers actually come in, if that core number comes in at 6.6 .6 from 6.3, it's just further cement of this three-quarter point increase coming up in November. There really would be, and if the Fed's serious about fighting this inflation, and right now they're saying they are, they're all the indications are they are, We'll see how they react if they're confronted with a crisis, but I think that right now there is no crisis for them to be confronted with, at least as far as we are talking about lately, at least. Um, underneath things with national debt and balance of payments and you know that kind of stuff, well, that's different, but I think that these inflation numbers are going to be interesting. It'll be, I can't wait to see what how accurate these forecasts are. Um, it's going to be fascinating to see how uh, it turns out. We're also going to get on that day initial jobless claims and unemployment report, and we're going to get a lot more earnings coming in on Thursday as well. That jobless claims will be an interesting one too, um, as you know we've been talking about on the show, and now even regular mainstream media has been talking about how you know the Fed is kind of pointing the finger at these sizzling employment numbers. Like somehow employment, people getting jobs is inflationary. You know, they don't want to point the finger at themselves. It's a lot easier to find the cause there. Um, so that'll be interesting to see where those numbers come in and how the market reacts to that along with the CPI in the same day. It could be kind of a really crazy whipsaw day depending on when these reports come out, right? And on Friday, well, we'll get business inventories. We'll get the import price index, which will show the cost of imports coming into this country, retail sales reports, and the Michigan Consumer Index showing consumer sentiment. All of this stuff's going to be fascinating, give us a, at least a more clear picture of where we stand right now. Um, and that kind of gives us then a little bit more of an idea of where we're going in the future, right? Um, and news you guys need to hear today, some interesting stuff. Just a couple of quick things. Um, the Japanese, as we talked about on the show, and I'm sure a lot of you guys heard and read about, uh, intervened in the markets pretty heavy to try to pump up the yen. Um, it did not work. It failed pretty bigly, actually, and pretty quickly at the same time. Um, the Fed Japan, their foreign currency reserves, okay, fell... One point to one point two four trillion dollars, a one month drop of fifty four billion dollars in their foreign currency reserves. Now, what's happening with that is foreign bonds are falling in value. I mean, if you're holding a treasury, you know, a, a ten year treasury at you know one and a half percent, and the prevailing is four percent. You're losing money on your one and a half, so they're getting killed in the bonds they're holding. Plus, they intervened with $20 billion. Uh, they spent out of that foreign currency reserves to buy yen to try to support their own currency. Uh, it had initially had a nice little rally, popped up, but it's now right back to where it started at 145 yen to the dollar. Um, the dollar's tough right now, guys, and it's hurting these other foreign economies. Um, I got a feeling this will not be the last intervention in these currency markets. An indication, though, of what it's going to take for these currencies to get to get back to where they want to be. If $20 billion in the market doesn't move it one iota, 
You know, how much is 50 billion going to move it or 100 billion? I mean, really, crazy, crazy, crazy times. It just keeps getting worse, guys. Here's an interesting thing I read today on real estate. Um, the article was entitled, Is 7% the New Normal for Mortgage Rates? I hope not, guys. Because if 7% is going to be where mortgage rates are, which is where they are now, and where they stay, I tell you this right now, real estate is in very, very, very deep doo-doo, man. Um, these prices are unsustainable at that rate. Um, even though houses are selling right now, I don't know. I think a lot of these houses must have been previously contracted with different rates locked in. I, I just don't know how people are buying $400,000, dollars $500,000 houses at 7%. Um, and affording those mortgages, if they're just regular working people, they're not. Um, but here was what some of these wonderful economists had to say about this today. They're warning us that rates will likely stay elevated, especially for mortgages. Here's what the economist said. This is a quote, quoting. When I bought my first home, mortgage rates were 75 to 8% said Christine Cooper, Chief Economist and Managing Director for CoStar Group, of, I guess a big hedge fund group. Um, she said it was part of life. Hmm. Now, new home buyers are getting a little bit of sticker shock. But in five or six months or a year, we're going to think that's just normal. We're going through a period of transition and people will adapt so what she's saying is, we're going to get to a normal interest rate environment, which really 6 to 7% is a normal, at least old school normal, uh, in rate for a mortgage. Um, but the problem we have is, you know, when she bought her first house, I'm guessing house, house prices were not no median 450000 um, Housing prices have gone up way, way, way more than wages have. You know, I do loans every day, and I'm telling you right now, even with the household median income in the United States at seventy thousand, we can't support four hundred, five hundred thousand dollar houses at seven percent. We just, it's just the numbers don't work, right? Um, and so Fed Waller, Fair Fed President Waller comes out, and he said that I cannot dismiss the possibility of a much larger drop in demand and house prices before the market normalizes. Now guys, let me translate that Fed speak to you, okay? That means that house prices are coming down to match the rate. As I've been saying about real estate, you got the price and you got the rate. Now most people, the first thing they wanna know and understand is how much is my payment? right? Because obviously that's the most important thing to the buyer. They want to know the price, sure. They want to know if they're ever going to be able to pay that house off. They also want to know how much they're going to have to pay every month and is that a feasible number they can live with every single month. Well, I tell you guys that at 7% and a $400,000 price, you're looking at a mortgage payment well over $3,000 per month. Sorry, that's just not doable, man. Now, if you're in California or New York and some of these places where these prices are higher and people expect to pay those numbers, that's one thing. Here in Vegas, where the median household income is 56000 no way, Jose. It's not going to work. So it's going to be fascinating to see how this all plays out. I wish it would just hurry up and crash already. I, you know, what do you guys think? Would you rather have it be like a long down, 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 down? Or would you just rather have it just go boom and get to the bottom and let's start to rebuild? I think, I don't know. I just see that this is going to just take long. It's going to be drawn out. There's going to be a lot of pain and a lot of surprises and twists and turns. Um, hunker down, guys. You know, the, the, it's getting to be crunch time now. The things we've been saying are applying more and more every day. Stash as much money as you can. Try not to take on any new debt. You know, invest your money conservatively. Um, 
you know, be thoughtful the way you're spending your money. Now is not the time to reach for stuff you want. Buy the stuff you need and hold the rest, man. Save your money because the storm is here and it's going to keep getting worse. You know, they're already knocking down the value of everybody's retirement accounts. Next, they're coming from your home. They're coming for your home equity. And everybody in the end of this is going to be feeling a lot poorer. So, you know, let's take care of getting in front of that now rather than being the big surprise at the end like, holy crap. Um, anyway, guys, that's it for today. I really appreciate your guys' support. As always, if you like what you're hearing, hit the like button. Share the video with your friends, your subscribers. Um, ask me your questions in the comments section. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll be talking about this data and getting you guys prepared for what's coming up. If you have investment questions, don't forget, ask Chuck Barone at Gmail. Dot com. Ask Chuck Barone at Gmail for your investment questions. Appreciate the support, guys. We'll be back again tomorrow, keeping you all up to date. Until we talk then, take care. Thanks.